Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is going to be about multi-display gaming, but no, it will not include anything about AMD iFinity, and it will not include anything about SLI. We are actually going to be running three monitors off of a single NVIDIA GeForce graphics card from Galaxy, and we are going to show you exactly how we are going to enable our surround gaming experience using only this one card. Now let's have a look at the physical card itself before we get into the multi-display technology. So that is, this is a GTX 570. It is completely non-referenced. So MDT is not the only thing that's custom about this. It uses a custom matte black PCB. It has the PCI Express connectors located in the back of the card as opposed to at the top of the card. It has a custom aluminum shroud that actually looks really sharp. Uses an 80 millimeter cooling fan. It's got four heat pipes that take heat away from the GPU to an enormous fin array. It obviously has more, <laughs> more ports on the back of it than a normal GTX 570, and it has 1.28 gigs of RAM. Now this is one of the things that may be a bit of a performance bottleneck for this card, especially in very widescreen gaming at wide, large resolutions such as 3 times 1080p. However, if you are running three smaller than 1080p monitors, that shouldn't be an issue. And if you're not gonna be running it in 3D, if you're gonna be using it instead for more of a business application where you just need multi monitors off a single card and hey maybe you need a powerful GPU for CUDA acceleration if you do video editing or whatever else then this could be a perfect solution for that as well. Before we show you the software configuration of the card I want to show you guys the physical setup because it is a little bit tricky. Unlike competing solutions from AMD, the Galaxy MDT card does not require a DisplayPort to DVI adapter. So the way it achieves that is with a custom implementation of DVI that is a little bit tricky to get set up the first time if you don't carefully follow instructions. So on the back of the card, you'll see that there are four DVI connectors and one mini HDMI connector. These are all numbered in a way that you should look at them carefully before you install the card or use the diagram which is actually located both on the back of the box as well as on the manual to ensure that you're plugging the correct monitor into the correct card. It supports up to a maximum of a 3 plus 1 configuration, so that is four displays total. The one single display, the separate display, the one that can't be used as a single virtual large display, either plugs into DVI-I or mini HDMI. The three displays, your leftmost plugs into DVI-1, your rightmost plugs into DVI-3, and your middle monitor plugs into DVI-2. This is gonna be very important because unlike Ifinity, you can't swap around which monitor is which once it's configured. You have to plug in to the correct port. MDT also comes with a very cool little application called, well, Galaxy MDT something along those lines. But what this does is actually much cooler than it at first appears. It is a way of quickly and easily deciding whether you want to use your monitors as one large monitor, which is ideal for gaming, or whether you want to use them as three independent monitors, which is a lot better for things like web browsing. How many times have you iFinity owners out there gone like this? Maximize. Oh, now how do I use this website? So my launch campaign button's over here, and my feedback and support button is over here. Brilliant, right? Great web design, that's why fixed width is magical. But we can avoid that by using the little MDT switcher. So all we do is click split the three displays as independent, current mode, split mode, okay. And now when we maximize a window, it just maximizes to the display that it's already sitting on. So this is a quick and painless way to switch between these two different ways of managing your system. It also comes with an additional software utility called WinSplit. And what WinSplit allows you to do is set up multiple virtual, uh, <laughs> what can I call them? Virtual displays or hotkeys for where you want applications to go and how you want them to be arranged on your large desktop. So you've got a couple different options for managing your multi-display setup. Now, just like with AMD's Ifinity technology, MDT is not gonna be able to run games correctly unless you create one large virtual display within the driver. So because we're using the solution where DVI is being split out into 
multiple monitors, we are able to fake it by creating a custom resolution. So what you do is you go within the NVIDIA control panel, go to customize the resolution under change resolution, create a custom resolution, and then all you have to do is change it to 5760 by 1080. The refresh rate has to be 50 hertz. And the reason for that is because we are limited by how much overall bandwidth DVI can provide to your three displays. So every refresh per second is an additional 1920 by, or rather 5760 by 1080 picture that has to be sent over the cable. The last thing we have to change is the timing to CVT reduced blank. Then we click test and it says the test is successful. Do you want to save this resolution? And the answer is yes. Now it's going to go back to clone mode. So you can see that it is, it is back the way it was, but that doesn't mean it didn't work. Now, when you go into change resolution, at the very top, you'll see custom 5760 by 1080. You click apply, and you are ready to rock. So here is our practical gaming demo. The question we asked before was, does it work? And the answer is a resounding yes. So we're running Dirt 3 with anti-aliasing on 5760 by 1080. So that is triple HD resolution. And we're getting about 40 FPS, which is a very playable experience in, and I almost wanted to call it iFinity, but in a multi-display surround environment. So we did have to customize the resolution of the game in the configuration file. So it did not automatically detect. It was not something we could set in game. However, if you hang out on widescreen gaming forum at all, or even if you don't and you just go there, they usually have walkthroughs and guides for how to manually override the resolution and refresh rate for games of pretty much every genre and many, many different titles. So this one was really simple, but you should be able to do almost anything without too much difficulty. It's a very, very cool experience, just like Ifinity, but the key difference here is now it's running on a GeForce. So thank you for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos from your favorite online retailer, NCIX.com.